I'm Luke Servelt. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today I'd like to talk about LCDs. And what I mean by that are light control devices. And when you hear that, you may think of uh, light tool, soft egg crates. You might think of DOP choice, the rag place, snap grids. You might think of honey crates. But I want to talk a little bit about how we got here because there seems to be like this proliferation of these LCDs out there and we have them for most of our lights, we have them for uh, larger frames. So let's talk a little bit about the history. And I'm just gonna talk from my own history, anecdotally, or over the last 30 years, sort of the progression as I remember it. So uh, starting off, I think back to the good old Mole Richardson 407 1K Baby. And now you say, okay, that doesn't look like an LCD. Well, it's, it's a set of barn doors. It's four leaf doors. And what is it trying to do? It's trying to control the spill of the light. And now uh, there's lots of leaks. <laughs> and there's, uh, that would often be covered with black wrap. Uh, or, you know, you put the diffusion here and maybe it's, it's high enough out of the shot, you don't worry about it, but often we would have to control that light. And, you know, even now we talk about HMIs being kind of spilly, you know, just uh, 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 a messy light because there's a lot of light spill that you have to control. And that's either flags or black wrap or, or whatever it is. Uh, so that's sort of the, the start. Often, uh, if we wanted to control it further, we'd build out, you know, foam core uh, snoots, basically hard snoots, similar to like a crony cone, if you've uh, seen pictures of those or used them. Sometimes we get pretty sophisticated too. You know, we'd, we'd have a softener on the front, but we might have an intermediate uh, softener as well. And uh, uh, just a, a way to not only soften the light, but control the light. Mole Richardson also made soft lights. They still do. They make them in LED now, but we used to have, you know, the little zip lights. So you'd have a 750 zip or a 2K zip. And uh, what would go in, and that would go all the way up to a, you know, a 4K super soft. But the, those units, you could also get a hard egg crate for those. And they would just slide in from the top and they were all painted black you know, like the doors, and it allowed you to control that light and control that spill. And uh, yeah, spent many years working with those. Then in my memory, uh, starting out, kind of looking to become more of a gaffer myself, Kinoflows were coming out and they came with a hard egg crate. Uh, that was right up against the, the, the tubes. And sometimes we would take that crate and we would offset it from the front of the unit and tape it to the front of the flexible doors. And so you'd have this egg crate a little bit further away from, from the unit. Uh, now, if you have any Kina flows today, if you have uh, select uh, LED, Kina flows. They have come up with an egg crate, a hard egg crate that goes right to the front of the unit. And, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing because there is no side spill anymore. Uh, we'd often put black wrap on the sides of uh, old style Kinos. You don't need to do that with, uh, with these selects anymore. And this, this, um, this is a 90 degree grid. So that means, you know, 90% of the transmission of the light is still getting through, but no spill. And that's pretty awesome. Now, uh, we used to actually, we used to build uh, we'd put, you know, black wrap here, and then we would build uh, sections of foam core that, that we would tape top and bottom and put them in here, sort of like 
a, a, a large crate. And that would just be, you know, on a, on a set uh, where we're just trying to keep the, the key lights from affecting the background so that we could put patterns or whatever uh, on the back. And yeah, all kinds of uh, DIY solutions to control spill. Then, of course, chimeras came out. So you had a ring that slipped in, into the, uh, the barn door holders. And then uh, with you'd, you'd have a big soft box that, that would come out on uh, different sizes. And that was all about getting a softener there. But it also controlled the light around the fixture. So it, it uh, controlled the spill. And uh, chimeras, you could put, um, sure, at, at the beginning, the softener, the diffusion on the front was sewn in. You couldn't replace it. Then they started, you were able to replace it, just Velcro it in like you can today. And then some gaffers would call for a hard grid. So you'd have a hard grid like you have with the Kinoflow, and that was cut out in the size of the front of a Shamira, which was often sort of like four by three uh, ratio, you know, the, the, the front. Um, and that would be another way to control the spill of it so that it just um, went where you wanted it. And of course, that's used an awful lot in uh, still photography as well. And then what I remember is light tools. Company is still around today. They came out with these soft fabric crates, egg crates, they call them. And those would just Velcro to, to the front of the Shamira. And that was a, a, a wonderful way. You didn't have to store a hard crate somewhere in a box and worry about it getting broken. Uh, you just had this soft, uh, foldable, easily storable egg crate. Now they are quite, I wouldn't say flimsy, but you know, you have to be careful with them. And then DOP choice came along and made soft boxes to go on units that didn't require a, a frame or a, a ring that, that would slip in. It just attached to the front magically almost to the uh, fronts of the units. And so just as an example, let me get out a sky panel. I usually tie the cables to the bale just so that they're, they're there. Now, you're probably also familiar with the snap bag that you can get uh, that attaches right to the unit. And then you can get a snap grid that goes in front of that. Well, how I often use these is with a snap grid that goes directly to the unit. Now it's the second snap grid you have to purchase, but um, because it's already somewhat soft, and if you want maximum output, uh, having a snap grid that goes directly onto the unit is a handy thing. And so, You know, even from this vantage point, uh, I can't see the unit. You know, if, if this isn't on, I can see it full bore. But as soon as this is on, uh, this uh, side spill is gone. Now, you lose a little bit of output just by putting something in front of it like this that's all black. But uh, that's an amazing uh, spill suppressor. So here we find ourselves in a world populated by a multiplicity of snap boxes, snap grids. Uh, Shimura now has come out with a line of uh, pop boxes. And I think light tools have come out with pop soft crates or something. So you know, everybody's in on the act and it's great. We're taking care of our light spill. Awesome. Now, is it the right tool for everything? No, uh, if you've got a shiny surface, cars, for instance, not always the best thing to have a grid pattern show up in there. You don't want to have too light of a softener uh, behind that grid because sometimes that hard light then will show up the little squares on 
reflective surfaces or any surface uh, that's, that's you know, too close to that unit. So from time to time, DPs ask if I have larger LCDs. So six by six or eight by eight, and even 12 by 12. And I have to tell them no, but I can rent them. And uh, often I'd come back with the rental price and they'd be like, whoa, uh, that's okay. We can figure it out another way. Well, uh, I knew that another gaffer in San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Chris Galdez of Galdez Fine Lighting and Grip, uh, owns a number of these. And I've always wanted to try them out. Well, recently I was given, thank you very much, an 8x8 eight eight Honey Crates uh, LCD. And I figured this was the perfect opportunity. Chris was uh, gracious enough to allow me to uh, check that out. And the funny thing was, I didn't really know what I was looking for. Like, was it a, an f-stop reading? Like, you know, how much light was this taking away? Well, it turns out uh, his uh, 8x8 LCD is uh, 40 degree and my honey crates is 50 degree. So it, it wasn't really a comparison. What I found out was that the honey crates version is really robust. I mean, when they talk about the, the structure of it makes it robust, absolutely. It, you've, and it's quick because it's all Velcroed. Whereas uh, the other LCD, you had a lot of ties uh, all around the, uh, the perimeter of it. So the LCD that Chris has has much smaller squares. So I didn't really have a conclusion between the two. The Honey Crates is well made and uh, goes up very quickly. The other one does a great job. It just takes a little longer to put together. And here's kind of a novel thing. This is a 30 by 50 degree snap grid. And this was custom made by the Rag Place. Um, and uh, they had first sent me a, a 4 by 4 version, but I don't have 4 by 4 frames. <laughs> I have 42 by frames. But I said, you know, what I could really use is a three by three uh, for these Aladdins. And uh, it's, uh, I, I really like it because you have the choice of having a more horizontal uh, vignette and a more vertical vignette. And that works out pretty well. And I like how deep the squares are or the, the rectangles are. So if you want to learn more about LCDs, I'd recommend you go to the website of Light Tools. Uh, they talk about occlusion, which is basically the blocking of light. So the concept is the closer you get to the LCD, the less wrap you're going to get from left and right of, of the unit. And so the farther away you're going to get more of that light, you're just going to be farther away from the unit. Harry Box in his Set Lighting Technician's Handbook says that when you're using the larger frames with egg crates, you effectively circumvent the inverse square law. And what that means is as you move towards the source, with the egg crate, you see less of the source. So here we're panning left and we're panning right and we're just really getting the middle of the unit. And as we pull out, that's when we see more of the unit. So in our little setup here, if I take a reading at this position, I get a one, four and five tenths. So one, one, four, split two. Then if I come in halfway, take another reading, I've gone up two tenths, so one, four, seven tenths. And then if I come in closer, take another reading, we get a one, four, and nine tenths. So that should have been a lot higher uh, as we got closer to the unit, but because of the occlusion, uh, we get a reading that's a lot closer. So obviously with larger distances, you know, this would work better. Go to the rag place. They kind of have some pictures of, you know, what the different degrees will uh, give you as an effect. And, uh, and then of course there's honey crates and check out all the uh, uh, units that they have available. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.
Nice thing of having pins uh, that come out on the frame is that if you have it high enough above uh, the leg, then you can spin it uh, 360. So that's handy. Um, okay, I'm hitting the light above, but uh, that's a, uh, it's handy in case you need to, um, you know, if you have a, a bounce and you want to have light side, dark side, uh, you, can, you can spin it if you have the pins going out. If you have the pins going down, that's harder to do. If you have ears, that's harder to do as well. Uh, but you can also do an ear on either side, but having the pin, uh, I just like that.